Okay, so today I'm going to talk about upgrading the firmware in a Zebra FX7500 fixed reader. So Zebra has their own little utility, this 123 RFID desktop. Uh, it may be fine for certain things. I find it as frustrating as I do useful. There are times it just won't find the reader, and I can't explain why. Maybe it has something to do with one PC setup versus another, I, who knows, right? Um, but I need something that actually works 100% of the time. And so I'm going to show you today how to configure your readers and update firmware by using a web browser, just no installed software required. Now, in terms of updating firmware, uh, we're going to have to go out to the the support site for this product. And guess what? They don't call it firmware. They call it an operating system. Oh. So download the latest one. I'm going to be doing 3.10.30. And you'll download that 170 megabytes of information. Uh, it'll be a compressed file. Um, extract it. And then when you want to connect your reader, this is what you do. Go on the bottom of the reader, there will be a label. That label will have a sticker, and it will start with something like FX7500, or if it's the 9600, it'll be FX9600. And then there will be the last um, three pairs from the MAC address. So just type that in. I've already done this once, you can see, right? And hit enter, and you'll get to the home page of the reader. So you don't even need to know what the IP address of the thing is. The default password is change in lowercase. Notice it's, reckon, it's referencing the fact that this is not a secured um, um, SSL type connection. And I'm going to override that. Okay, so here we go. Here's a, we'll, we'll fix that issue after we update this firmware. There have been some security updates in this latest version. And so that's one of the key things is that it's going to force it into an SSL type connection. Okay. So there's our MAC address. Hey, we might want to actually write that down for a future reference, right? Um, and here you can go in here really quick and you can say, look, do I have any existing applications that are on there? Do I have um, uh, this set up so that it is, um, set up for DHCP. If it isn't, you know, turn it on, turn it off if you want. Uh, if you, you can configure this however you wish, okay? You can even put in an FX Connect um, license here. But we're going to go in a little deeper and we're going to say firmware. All right. And here is our current firmware. And we're going to go ahead and say update by file-based upload. This is a little weird, but uh, it wants us to select more than one file, right? So firmware files. So we're going to browse out to where that folder, that downloaded folder is. I think it's this one. It's all kinds of things. So say control A to select all, say open. And go ahead and hit start update. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing now. And I'll probably just uh, pause and come back in a little bit to um, to show what the, the final state is here. All right, I'm going to try to catch the final end of this. It's about three, four minutes long to update the firmware here. It says it's done. We'll see what happens. As you watch the process, it actually goes through each of the individual files that you selected and is erasing and rewriting them. And in this version of the firmware, it's supposed to come back and ask us to um, change the password um, automatically. So there are, there are some additional steps that should be coming up here. Oh, by the way, when it's rebooting, the reboots take about a minute or more. So be patient. Okay, we're back again. Looks like it might be done. Let's see. Yep. And we'll start again with change and see if it prompts us this time for a new password. Well, there's our new firmware anyway. And I don't actually see the reference to making this a um, uh, we can read tags from this thing as well. Should be able to. Uh, yep, there we go. 
stuff. So we do have a connection here. We have updated the firmware properly. And if I hit communicate and look at my Ethernet connection, DHCP is on. There's my, um, my IP address. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can log into this one more time and see if it actually uh, asks me to, um, to change my password at this point. So bear with me here. I'm going to go ahead and um, I think close this one out. Let's say log out. Remember our, pass, our IP address is now this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and change that and we'll just type in that IP address. All right. And now we should get to the same page and let's see if I can use the same change password to get in. Default password change is required in HTTPS. Do you want to switch reader to that mode? Say yes. And let's see what happens. Um, I think we might need to re uh, get to clear the cache on this first. Here we go. Say, whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Say advanced. We'll say accept anyway. And you can see that is a proper HTTPS default password changes required, redirecting to password change page. All right. There we go. There's the old password change. And um, well, um, I'll put in something else and change my password. Oh, did like the length or complexity. Let's see if that worked. Yep, there we go. And we're back in. So now we're actually using a secure connection and it's forced us to change the password to something a little bit more complicated. You can see that with this version of the firmware 31030 that they're thinking more about security on these readers now. That's a good thing. So um, anyway, again, 123 desktop uh, is great for some other things, but I really prefer just going to a web page to configure these hardware readers. Nothing's required to install. I just need the firmware files. Um, I, I, it's just a far easier way to go in my opinion.